Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. I'm Andrew Musgrove, joined as usual by John Gibson. And we're bringing back a very popular segment of the podcast, the Let's Talk About series. And we're going to pick a topic of Kieran Trippier this time around. If you remember, during the summer, we covered many topics to do with Newcastle United. There was Joe Linton, there was Eddie Howe, uh, St. James's Park and various other persons and subjects we covered. We've gone for Kieran Trippier today, John, simply because I think for many people, he is the catalyst uh, for what has happened at St. James's Park since his arrival. He was the first signing. He was the kind of the first domino to fall. And what uh, an impact he's had. Um, we've got lots to talk about. We've got comments from our listeners as well um, who've shared some, some thoughts on Kieran Trippier. What has Kieran Trippier done for you in the last year, John, at Newcastle United, which makes him stand out? Oh, he's an unbelievable player. I mean, he's a free kick specialist. He can defend immaculately. He can attack relentlessly. He's aggressive in the right way. He's got a terrific attitude, which was shown when he was he had his leg in plaster and he's going away games just to support the team. And, of course, he's an absolute leader. He's become captain of the side this season in the absence of Lascelles from the starting lineup. So he's got everything going for him. But above all, he was the first to come. We were in deep, deep trouble. He signed January the 7th, the very first player of that window. And at that stage, we were going down. And he just won La Liga. He played for... England in the finals of the Euros um, he had everything going for him yet he committed himself here and the stick he got not in the northeast but outside of the northeast if you remember oh he's only come for the money he's 36 he's 32 sorry he's only come for the money no he didn't he came because he bought in to what was going to happen in Newcastle and felt he could play a significant role in making that happen. And he did. I mean, you know, if Trippier hadn't come, would Bruno have come? Would Byrne and, and Bachman and Pope and followed? I mean, he opened the door for everyone else. And it's arguable that not only was he best, the best of the not only was he the first in the January to sign, but he was the best in January and perhaps even the best signing we've made so far. I know what Bruno's done. I know what Burns done and Botman and Pope. But you could argue, has anyone contributed more to the Newcastle cause than Kieran Trippier? And I think, uh, you know, that's a huge accolade to pay the guy. It's amazing that you that you say that considering he missed quite a large chunk of the second half of last season at picking up he that did. that injury, and yet he is still held by some as the the best signing of that that January window. Um, he's just a leader on and off the pitch, and it's actually that injury that I, I want to get to now. I think that's where he really shone for for many people because you know he was. In them pictures when Casa started winning, he was on the crutches. He was, he, you know, he was clearly still part of a of the dressing room, a massive influence. And we just got an insight into that leadership that he offers on and off the pitch. I mean, how important has that been? Do you think? Oh, I mean, without a shadow of doubt, when he went down on crutches to away games to support Newcastle, when 99% of players would have sat at home with a leg up on the settee and watched games on the telly. I mean, we, in that moment, I knew, as all Geordies knew, he was a future captain of this side. Absolutely no question. We've got a few with leadership qualities, like Byrne and like Trippier and like Bruno, but he's the captain of captains. And we knew then what he was going to become because we also knew then that Lascelles wasn't going to stay in the team in the starting lineup. So then we need a new captain and there was only one place to look and that was Kieran Trippier because he leads by example. And, you know, when you think he was, he had the courage to be the first to come January the 7th. We got Wood on the 13th. 
and then right at the death we got Bruno on the 30th target 31 Ben 31 but he come in right at the start and his debut for us was at home to Cambridge in the FA Cup where we got tucked up by a League One side at home so can you imagine a start like that because of his injuries he's only played 21 starts and three a sub and scored three goals because of his injuries last season but what an inspiration he's been and what a quality player and what an injustice for these so-called um authority voices of authority elsewhere in the country to suggest you only come for the cash how dare they if there's anybody that proves he doesn't play for cash but he plays for passion it's Kieran Trippier. Yeah, 100%. We are recording this on Friday afternoon. Of course, England play Senegal on Sunday. We'll not be putting this podcast out till Monday. So hopefully in that time, England have made it through. And who knows, Kieran Trippier might be back in the side. And he also, fingers crossed, his, his uh, potentially popped the, the cross into the box for Callum Wilson to score uh, the winner against Senegal. That would be a nice thought, wouldn't it? Would, wouldn't it? Let, let's talk a bit about the World Cup and, and Kieran Trippier because obviously his his form this season has led him to uh, that England squad started the first couple of games was on the bench against against Wales but did come off the bench uh, he slotted in didn't he over our left back came on for, for Luke Shaw um, I mean for me he was always going to be in that squad there's been plenty of debate about who's better you know Alexander Arnold Kyle Walker and Trippier seem to always be third on the list, especially in the national debate. Are we, John, guilty of being in a bit of a bubble with Newcastle United and, and because he's a Newcastle player, he, he is the best or is he actually the best? No, I don't think we are in a bubble at all. I think if there's a bubble created, it's created by Gareth Southgate, bless him, who is so loyal to players that often, regardless of form, they will stay in the team. He's very loyal to Jordan Pickford, which is to Pope's expense. He's very loyal to Harry Maguire. Uh, he's very loyal to Harry Kane uh, up against Callum Wilson. And he's also loyal to Cargill Walker, who was out of the right back spot because of injury. So, no, I don't think we're in a bubble. I mean, Newcastle are third top for a reason. And, and part of the reason very much is... Trippier, um, Pope and Callum Wilson along with Bruno. So it's natural that they should be in the England side. What is debatable is whether they should, uh, they should be in the England squad. Whether it's debatable is whether they should be in the side. I believe Trippier should. Supermac believes Pope should. And um, Wilson would never let anybody down. He's just unfortunate that he's up against the England skipper and top goal scorer. Who, by the way, before the Senegal game, hadn't scored in the three World Cup games this, this trip. Mm. I mean, a lot of the debate around uh, Alexander-Arnold has been about whether he can defend. Yep. A lot of people say he's, he's by far the best attacking uh, right wing back, right back you know, in the, in the game. But if you look at the stats, John, and I know you're not always a fan of stats, but I think you'll be a fan of this one. If you look at the stats for crossing in the Premier League this season... Kieran Trippier is first with 130 crosses. Second is James Ward-Prowse with 117. Trent Alexander-Arnold is down in fourth with 101. So if you look at that, clearly Kieran Trippier has got a, something about him going forward as well as, as, as defensively. I think I think that's absolutely true. Um, and I, don't, I think uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold is third choice England right back now. Um, I believe that Southgate has got a leaning towards Kyle Walker um, because of his pace and his quickness and he's very loyal to players. Um, mind you, if he watches the video of Maxi against him up here, he'll not be a, a Kyle Walker fan for too long because Maxi ran him ragged that day. But Trippier is quality. And He's proved to be quality throughout his career. He, he won La Liga with Atletico Madrid, who saw off Real Madrid and Barcelona to win the title. That is some doing, and he was the star of that side. And there's a backlash 
in Madrid now about them letting him go to Newcastle because they've tapered off form-wise and they believe it's because they haven't got Kevin Trippier. He got the final of the Euro Championships with England just last season and he was in the Spurs squad in 2019 that got to the Champions League final. He has got pedigree. There's absolutely no question about that. And to come to Newcastle showed great faith in in the project at Newcastle. Yes, he knew Eddie Howe because he'd been in Burnley with Eddie Howe. But I don't think that's the reason he came to Newcastle, just Eddie Howe. I believe he bought in to, to what we were going to do. And Bruno bought in quickly to hear in the same pattern and then knowing that somebody of Trippier's quality was already committed to coming here. And how important is that success that he's had, the medals he's collected, the caps he's got for England, the finals he's played in? How important is that for Newcastle United in the months that he's been here and, and going forward to what they want to achieve? How important is that experience? Oh, it, 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 it's absolutely 100% what Newcastle United are about. He epitomises everything Eddie Howe and the owners are trying to do at Newcastle United. And his enthusiasm is terrific. I mean, he's a fan favourite along with Bruno, isn't he? Because of what he's brought to the table. And other players can look up to him. He's won La Liga. He's played in, in, in finals for England. He's played in final. He's been involved in the squad with Spurs that's in a European final. He's got a pile of caps. He can score free kicks round the box for fun. He is absolute quality. When Newcastle was struggling for, for a right back, struggling to have somebody of consequence, and all the would Botman have come and Pope come in the summer if Newcastle hadn't had the lift off at the end of last season that was provided by Bruno, Trippier, and Byrne? And I, I think that has been absolutely important. I mean, I rate Trippier so highly that I've looked upon Newcastle United's right backs throughout their history. And they've got 130 years of history. Bear in mind, this guy's only played in 24 games for Newcastle because of he only come in January. It's, it's just coming up to a year and he's been injured. So he's only played in 24 games. Hard to judge a person in the history of a club when you've only played that. But I think on ability, this guy can end up being rated higher in my book than David Craig, who is by far the best Newcastle United right back there's been. And what you've got to remember with David is he played 412 games between 1962 and 78, which is phenomenal. He was as smooth as silk. He could defend. He could attack. And But for injuries, he would have played more than 412. He missed both the 70s Cup finals at Wembley because of hamstring injuries. He is by far the, the, the best. If you go beyond that, there's people we didn't see from the good old days when they were winning things like Bill McCracken and Andy McCombie that you've got to sort of say, well, they, they must be there or thereabouts. But you look at Bobby Cowell, who played three cup finals for Newcastle in the 50s. You look at Irving Natris, who was as silk as, as silk as smooth as is possible to be. There was Steve Watson, there's Barry Venison, there's Dick Keith from the old days, there's John Anderson, and Mr. Muscles, who did so well for Newcastle United. There's Neil MacDonald. We've had a few good right-backs. By far the best we've had is David Craig. This fella has the ability. It's difficult for him to challenge. He's 32 now and played 24 games. He played 412 games. But on ability, and I saw, I saw the full career of David Craig, and I rate him so highly it's untrue. Craig and Clark's the best partnership we've had at fullback in Newcastle's history. But this guy is as good as that. And other people that were around that team that I've talked to recently, like Supermac and like Paul Cannell that played in the in the team 76 League Cup side, um, both think Trippier is 
exceptional and good enough to be bracketed now with David Craig. And believe you me, that's some accolade. I was going to ask you about the age. He is 32. And I know players can are playing for much longer these days. You know, the longevity of players in the top flight is, is much more than it used to be. But it is going to be difficult for him to, to maintain the levels level he is at because a lot of his defensive work is to do with the speed that he gets back, with the speed that he keeps up with the wingers. And you would think that the wingers he's going to face are only going to end up getting younger. He's only end up going to end up getting older. So he's going to have to spend a lot of time in the gym. He's going to have to eat the right things. But I think he does that. And I, that's what I was going to say. You get, the, you get the feeling that he is going to put everything into prolonging his career as far as it can possibly go. And at 32... Yeah. He's probably as fit, if not fitter, than most of the lads. Ten years is a uh, is his uh, ten years younger than him. He's certainly fitter than me, and he's a year older. Well, there you go. Uh, but I mean, I think you, you're right. Uh, Newcastle play a high pressing game, which is all action, which is you know you, you bang, bang, bang up the field, back up, down, up, down, up, down. It's a very physical game. Newcastle play. In terms of your fitness, I'm talking, not in terms of aggression. Um, and so it is going to be hard in his 32. But let's put it another way. He is two years older than Callum Wilson, but you could suspect that he'll go on longer than Callum because, I, because of Callum's injury uh, problems that he regularly has. So you can see him lasting longer than, than Callum Wilson may last at the very top, I'm talking about. But... Uh, he is superbly fit, and and I don't think he's going to suddenly disappear in the way that Ramsey and Gareth Bale have disappeared and, and suddenly become yesterday's man. And if Ronaldo is getting to that stage now, he is 37. He has had a long, long career, and there's quite a bit of time open to trip here yet. Um, but I think he looks after himself, and uh, yes, they're going to get... Uh, younger as he gets older as you rightly say the wingers and they're going to run as quickly at you as Almiron does um, so you know it's going to be a handful but I think he has got a lot to be about for the next three to four years um, without a shadow of doubt and then I think he's got a future in the game mm. because he, he has enough about him he's enough of a leader he, he's enough of a connoisseur of football his enthusiasm for football. I see him as a coach or manager of the future, without a shadow of a doubt. I don't think he'll leave the game in the way people like David Batty, who once David was finished playing, never had that much interest in the game apart from playing. And so you knew he would stay, he would leave the game immediately. I don't think that'll happen with Kieran uh, Trippier at all. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before on the podcast. If I was Newcastle, I'd maybe look to do something with a, with a, a new deal and, and tie in the fact that you would offer him a, a coaching role to, to tie him down in Newcastle once he retires in two, three, four years. I mean, we have got people in, in the comments, you know, uh, Tintin and golf just simply puts future manager question mark. And as you did, John, he's definitely got the attributes, I think, trivia to he has. from that. Um, one of the other things you mentioned there was kind of uh, the aggression and, and he organizes the defense really well, which is one asset. But the other asset is the fact that he's, he doesn't back down and he's got everybody's back. And, you know, when, when, because there is very much a, a siege mentality, I think, in Newcastle, it is the world against us. Um, and he, he leads the line very well when it comes to that stand up for his teammates. He, you know, he also appears very good at winding up the opposition and getting the little digs in here and there, or just saying the right thing in someone's ear to wind them up. I mean, that's a massive part of his game, isn't it? Oh, and by the way, all the great sides have a siege mentality. Whether I know why we've got one, because the rest of the world seems against us. But Alex Ferguson used to cultivate that deliberately at Manchester United. He would pick on things where people were saying things about Manchester United, just to get that siege mentality, because you hit your best when it's all for one and one for all and everybody hates us. That is the best way of having it together and it produces results. And I mean, 
he's a little guy, Kieran Trippier, but he's a, he's a little, you know, when you go in a park and there's a dog that keeps round your ankles and it's irritating and it won't go away. He, he, he's like that, isn't he? He's got that aggression in him. That, little terrier. Aye, while, he, while he's a nice guy off the park, he, you think when he's on that field, he's a little blinking irritant if you're the opposition. And, and that's what you want and that's what he does and he does well. And he explains to the people around him why he's doing certain things tactically and, you know, if he, if he blanks somebody and turns inside to put the ball inside, he, he'll explain to the fellow that's made the run out wide why he didn't get the ball. He is very good at, at, at getting everybody singing from the same hymn sheet. Well, just on that, a man whose form has, has surprised everybody. And if you're listening, you probably had a bit of a sweepstake going on about how long it would take me to mention Miguel Almiron and John's application to the fan club, which he still hasn't submitted. Um, no, I'm not a member of the fan club, and I've talked about them before you in this podcast because I just said, what if somebody like Almiron runs a trip here every game at his pace? Oh, oh, yes, actually, you're right. You, did. you mentioned him first, so I, I don't did. think anyone would have seen that coming. But on his form, on Almiron's form, um, has him playing in front of Trippier got, it, it, I'm not saying it's a huge part of it, but I do think it's played a part in it where he's Very got someone behind him who can organise him and just tell him where he needs to be and instruct him. Out. In my opinion, a very, very significant part of, of Almiron's development is being, if you like, the triangle that's developed with Trippier behind Almiron and Bruno just inside. That triangle has released all the best stuff that's been inside of Almiron that we weren't seeing prior to this setup. It is no coincidence in my book that, that Almiron is looking what he is now since Trippier and Bruno come to the club and not before then. He didn't look the same player before then. Um, and I'm not putting it down to them because good luck to, to Migi for doing what he's done in his own mind. But he has benefited hugely down that right-hand side by having Trippier behind him and just inside him, Bruno. And, and they have worked a triangle terrifically in this first third of the season. And how much has Eddie Howe benefited do you think having someone on the pitch that he can entrust the lieutenant you know you've got Callum Wilson as well um but Kieran Trippier I would think is probably the, the the main mouthpiece to get the instructions out to make sure that the instructions that are set in the dressing room are then there when the players cross the line and you know, they go through the whole of the team and that's down maybe to Trippier just to do what a captain needs to do and make sure that everyone yes. knows what they're doing absolutely uh but Newcastle have bought good guys haven't they when you go through the list of, of what they've bought uh, just in the last year, because January is when everybody come in. I mean, Trippier hasn't been here a year until January the 7th. Uh, but when you look at Trippier, you look at Bruno, you look at Byrne, you look at Botman, you look at Pope, they're not only good players, they're good characters. They're good characters. And that's one of the reasons why... I was anxious that we didn't take Cristiano Ronaldo because I think he would upset the apricot. A lot of people had a, a dip at me for saying, you know, please don't sign him. Um, but my reason for saying that was because people outside of the Northeast, including Ronaldo's agent, was trying to get Newcastle involved because they felt that Newcastle could pay his wages. So his people were trying to foist them on to Newcastle United. Now, I didn't think for one moment, if it came down to um, Eddie Howe, that he'd want Ronaldo because he would upset the apple court that has been beautifully set up by Trippier, Bruno, Byrne, Botman, Pope, those sort of guys. Um, so we didn't want him in. The worry is sometimes owners want people in, they, 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 managers don't. I mean, the new guy at Chelsea would would have taken Ronaldo in a heartbeat, but both Tuchel and Potter don't want him. But the, the worry is that people sometimes see the player a guy was, not the player he is now. Newcastle suffered from that when they signed Michael Owen. 
Newcastle saw the player that played at Liverpool and not the player that was being released by Real Madrid and made available by Real Madrid. Um, so Newcastle have got the right people in and, and Trippier epitomises that. And, you know, it, it's worked so well, you've got to pinch yourself, Andrew, to think, can we keep being so clever or so lucky or whatever it is in the transfer market that we get quality players who have got a great attitude, etc., etc. Because however much homework you do, a wrong and can slip through the net. And Trippier was the first, and it seemed to trigger that everybody that come in would be this industrious type of player that can play high tempo game, that, which is what we want, and are good characters. Uh, and that above everything. I mean, Bobman is a quality player, but what a good character. Um, Pope is an excellent goalkeeper, but what a good character. Bruno is absolutely outstanding, but what a good character. Yeah, and that's that's the difference. And that is not always there. Is that the bar being set, do you think, by Trippier in terms of the attitude and what he brings on and off the pitch, but Trippier. also the quality? I mean, so much. When you're a club at the bottom as opposed to at the top. When you're a club at the bottom, the first signing you make is so important because it sets the bar either very low because you're unambitious or very high uh, because that's where you want to go. And Trippier set the bar very, very high and it was mind-blowing. And it, when you think of how much it cost, it's peanuts for a player with his uh, CV and, and his ability to get him at that cost. I mean, that was the other thing. Everybody was looking at the first signing Newcastle made outside of the Northeast in the whole of the football world to say, one, are they going to buy somebody just for his name? Two, are they going to pay way over the odds and way over the odds in wages just to get a marquee signing in? And three, is the guy going to just come for a retirement home? And Trippier answered all those questions. The fee was well inside outrageous. His ability was unquestioned, and it certainly wasn't a retirement home. If you watch him play, it's, it, the last thing he's thinking about is retirement. He plays at 100 miles an hour for an hour and a half plus, whatever extra time's added on. He set the bar for us, and we have to be very grateful. We have to be grateful to him, but we have to also be grateful to the owners, to Eddie Howe who knew him from Burnley and people that did the work to make certain that the first signing was top of the range, which was mm. important. Well, I mean, whatever he was sold, it definitely worked and persuaded him to come here. Yeah, didn't have a release clause as well, had Newcastle gone down. That, but That was terrific, wasn't it? And same with Bruno, well done Bruno and that. Neither of them had mm. a release clause if we went down. And that was, that's really blind faith. Mm, sure, the big belief in what Whitey Howe was building. One thing we haven't mentioned yet, John, is his ability with free kicks. I mean, not the opposition are absolutely fearful when someone goes down just outside the box because uh, sure they should be. Kieran Trippier over the wall. He's 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 fantastic. I mean, the funny thing was, I was watching one of the England games when he wasn't on the pitch. It might have been uh, the last one when he come on as a left back sub, and England got a free kick round the box. And the first thing the commentator said was. Oh, this is Kieran Trippier uh, territory, you know, if only Trippier was on the field and I'm thinking, yeah, you're all getting the message now. That is how good he is. I mean, it's phenomenal when you've got somebody like that, Ward Prowse at, at, at Southampton and a couple of other players and they can line the wall up where they want, the goalkeeper can stand where he wants, they can have somebody lying on the floor so he can't put it under their feet when they jump. They can put everybody where he wants and he'll still score. Yeah, uh, and that is quality, and he's got that. And it's not just that he'll score those free kicks, the corners he takes, the balls that he whips in when going down the wing, whips in with with pace on them, not snow on them, 20 foot in the air, and you've, you wait 10 minutes for it to come down, and the defence has got time to organise against that. He He is lethal. He is absolutely lethal. He's a second winger, isn't he? When, when he goes forward, you've got two wingers down the right-hand side. You've got Almirin and you've got Trippier. He's an extra winger. 
uh, as well as a defender. And that's how much football has developed. Mm. You look at Frank Clark, one of the great players Newcastle United have had. He played fullback the way fullbacks used to be played. You defend, you don't let anybody pass you the way Bobby Cowell played, etc., etc. But you wouldn't get Frank Clark around the edge of their box. You'll get Trippy around the edge of their box because that's the way fullbacks play now. And he's a perfect example of a modern fullback. Yeah, 100%. I was going to ask you actually because it's often said that Ir- Irving Natwis, when he got so far into the opposition half, he would kind of, his legs would turn to, would turn to jelly. And you mentioned. Frank that's, there as one, well. that's one of the things Supermax always said about him, about Irving. With uh, and I think it's a tad harsh because I tell you what, he was off silky smooth. Irving, Irving could have played any position on the park he liked. He could play ah. right back, left back, two centre halves, and midfield. He could actually. He was too good for his own case because he didn't have a regular position because he could play. Joe could use him all over the shop, and that's why he didn't become an England regular. Had he been a regular right back, had he been a regular defensive midfielder, he would have got England caps. But because he could play in all the positions, Maidley, Paul Maidley, got a handful of England caps, was a superstar at Leeds, suffered from the same thing. He could play everywhere. How important is it, given the way Newcastle play, John, they like to pass it out from the back, that they have someone who is comfortable on the ball, someone who can take one touch and pass it left, pass it right, or take a touch and go forward. You know, he's really good on the ball. And and Newcastle have developed that way of playing, haven't they? Trippier is so comfortable on the ball. Um, Bopman is so comfortable on the ball. The only one to survive in the back four from who was at Newcastle prior to Eddie Howe is Shaw. And why has he survived? Because he's comfortable on the ball. We have defenders now. It's like the, the old days. Fullbacks used to defend. That's all they did. And, and attackers attacked. Fullbacks now attack as much as defend. And centre halves have got to be able to play with the ball at their feet as much as defend. And the way Newcastle play, uh, that is vitally important. And it works because we've got the meanest defence. Let's remember, Trippier is part of the meanest defence in the in the Premier League. I think there's only Arsenal let in as few goals as we have, and they've let them in from one game less. So, you know, that means they're not quite yet as good as Newcastle United defensively. I suspect, John, the answer to this question might be very short. Is there a weakness to Kieran Trippier's game? No. That's the, the, the short answer. There's always a weakness in terms of a player can have a bad game. It is physically impossible. Pele had a bad game. Not too often, mind you'll have difficulty finding it, but it was there. Pele would have a bad game. Trippier will have... A, I didn't think Trippier's last game for England, when he, his last game he started, was anywhere near as good as Trippier can be. By Trippier's standards... The, the game against USA, yeah. by Trippier's standards, that was a poor game for him. You can have a poor game, but you, he's got all-round ability. You can, everywhere, striking free kicks, aggressive, going forward, defending, attitude, leadership. He has all those boxes are ticked. You get other people and you say, oh, he's a quality defender, but oh dear, if you put him against pace... He's dead because quick people will go past him. He has got a bit of everything. He takes every box. It doesn't say you can't have a bad game because everybody, it's been, it's called being human. Mm. People have bad games. And as I say, even the world greats have bad games. The secret is which players have the fewest bad games. Yeah. And he's one of those. 100%. We'll get under some comments now from our listeners. Just before I do that, just remember a uh, reminder to please like and follow the podcast through your podcast provider. So whether that's Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening to, search everything is about my podcast and hit that subscribe button. Leave us a rating and review as well. And if you're watching this on YouTube, because John and I are filming this, and uh, hopefully if you are watching on YouTube, you will like what you see and hit that subscribe button um, and leave us a comment or two and I'll respond to them when I get the chance. Now, John, I did ask for some listeners to get in touch and tell us what they thought about Q and Trippier, so I'll read through uh, a few of them. Uh, Parksy, 
on Twitter says he thought Trippier was a decent player but didn't realise how good he actually is until he signed and played for Newcastle. His quality on and off the ball but also is a leader constantly ordering the defence around. For me, he's already the best right back we've had in modern times. I think, John, he's pretty much, Parksy there, summed up everything we've we've just said. Without a shadow of doubt, and, and even to the suggestion that, you know, he, he's in the David Craig class. Um, and David, my apologies to you, my friend, because you played 400 games and you are the best thing I've ever seen in a two shirt. This, and that is why I'm paying such a tribute to Trippier by saying he can challenge David Craig. I wish Trippier had been here for as long as David Craig was here. What an asset that would have been. Yeah, and, and, you know, if he had ended up playing 400 games for Newcastle, do you think we would have enjoyed that? You bet your life we would. I mean, there's been some, I'm, I'm talking in the last kind of 20 years or so, some some right backs who were were good right backs, but they weren't here long enough. And the, the turmoil of the Mike Ashley years, I'm thinking of someone like Habby Bay. I thought he was a tremendous fullback, but again, he left once the castle got relegated. Uh, you had uh, the Bushy, who ended up going to, to Arsenal, I thought was another another good quality uh, right back. And you had Warren Barton as well, and another solid uh, right back who was you know, the, the most expensive British defender at one point when he signed for Newcastle. Um, Based on what you've said, John, in this episode, Trippier better than all three of them? Those three aren't in the same class as Kieran Trippier. Not in the same class. I agree with you totally that there were good players. We've had a lot of good players, but we haven't had a lot of Peter Beardsley's. We've had a lot of good players, but we haven't had a lot of Kieran Trippier's. Um, because there's the good player, and then there's the outstanding player, and then there's the great player. And um, yes, those, those three you've talked, and I mean, I, <clears throat> I've gone through the list. If you go further back, you've got Irving Nappers, you've got Steve Watson, you've got Barry Venison, all good players. You've got Neil McDonald to play for Newcastle at 17 year old. Good, good players. Trippy is better. There we it's have it. Um, some other comments we've got Isaac saying. In my eyes, already one of the best fullbacks in modern day Newcastle United history. Can't see anyone at his level in the last 15 years. One thing that stands out is his actual, he is actually top class quality. Shame about his age, but long may it continue for now. Um, again, I think we've kind of uh, echoed those sentiments there. And Harkey simply says he is simply another level. Short but sweet, but again, just summing up, John, what we said about Trippier, he is a different guy. Totally. I mean, what I want to see happen now for Kieran Trippier, he's got a La Liga winner's medal, he's got a finalist in the Euro Championships with England, and he's got a gong from the Champions League final with Spurs. I want him to win something with Newcastle. Um, and if that's the League Cup this season, if it's the FA Cup, if it's going into Europe and winning the Euro League or, or, or even better, something in the Champions League, and time is still on our hands, he can play for the next four years. And would you bet against Newcastle winning something in the next four years? I wouldn't. No, I think uh, it's a big possibility. And to see him leading Newcastle as, as likely captain, you know, I don't think that's beyond... Well, yes, he would be the captain that picked up the trophy. There's no question about that. And wouldn't that be wonderful? And wouldn't it be deserved? And by the way, it wouldn't have been deserved for somebody like Callum Wilson, whose only medal so far is a second division championship medal with Bournemouth. It so wouldn't have been be deserved for, for Newcastle United fans whose uh, last oh. major trophy was 1969. Well, we don't need to get onto that. We know you were there. No, no, we, that's another hour's programme if we'll get onto that. But <laughs> ab absolutely right. But it would be wonderful for Kieran Trippier to pick up a trophy on behalf of Newcastle United. And that's what faces him. Newcastle United will win a trophy and get rid of all these barren years since 1969, and he will be captain when that happens. Well, he's come He's come to Newcastle for that, hasn't he? He's not left a, a team like Athletic no, Madrid, and he's not so. turned down, well, not turned down, but Manchester United were interested. And, you know, he's not turned yeah. down and moved to another side just to pick up a paycheck, as some have accused him. He's come here to win things. He wants Absolutely to go on right. a high when his career does end. 
Um, and right. fingers crossed it happens sooner rather than later. Um, just to sum up then, John, um, sum up Kieran Trippier in his first 11 months at Newcastle United. Yes, I mean, beyond our belief, as so many players have been, absolute trendsetter, the man that opened the door for everybody else to be able to walk through it, a man of huge consistency, uh, of incredible enthusiasm. He's in his 30s and he's playing like a little boy who's just started in the team with all that wild enthusiasm for success. And isn't that wonderful? Isn't that what keeps you going? It's what keeps me going at my age. Um, that enthusiasm for success. And I think it'll happen with Newcastle and that will please everybody. It'll, it'll, it'll be a reward for him to pick up a trophy as Newcastle skipper because he would be skipper this time. Not like he hasn't been skipper the other times, but he'd be skipper this time. He would pick up the trophy and he would fulfil the dreams of all the Newcastle fans. He would fulfil the dreams of new owners and a new manager. Everything's a win-win and my doesn't he deserve it. And by the way, I think he'll get it. And that's even more important. Fingers crossed. Well, this has been the Everything is Black and White podcast. Let's talk about Kieran Trippier. I've been Andrew Muscov, joined by John Gibson. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and head over to chroniclelive.co.uk where we'll keep you up to date with all the latest Newcastle United news. Thank you very much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your week.